Lord, yes. To your will and to your way. Yes, Lord, yes. I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree. And my answer will be yes. Lord, yes. I say yes, Lord, yes. To your will and to your way. Oh, yes, Lord, yes. I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me. With my whole heart I'll agree. And my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. I say yes, Lord, yes. To your will and to your way. Oh, yes, Lord, yes. I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me. With my whole heart I'll agree. And my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. I say yes, Lord, yes. To your will and to your way. Oh, yes, Lord, yes. I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me. With my whole heart I'll agree. And my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. I say yes, Lord, yes. To your will and to your way. I say yes, Lord, yes. I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree. And my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. It don't take much. I can do church alone. You know that. She is so happy by herself sometimes. I say yes, Lord, yes. To your will and to your way. I say yes, Lord, yes. I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me. With my whole heart, I'll agree. And my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. I say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree. And my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. My soul say yes, oh yes, oh yes. My soul say yes, oh yes, oh yes. My soul say yes to the word of God. My soul say yes, oh yes, oh yes. Oh, my soul say yes, oh yes, oh yes. Hallelujah. My soul say yes, oh yes, oh yes. My soul say yes to the word of God. My soul say yes, oh yes, oh yes. My soul say yes, oh yes, oh yes. My soul say yes, oh yes, oh yes. My soul say yes to the word of God. My soul say yes, oh yes, oh yes. My soul say yes, oh yes, oh yes. My soul say yes, oh yes, oh yes. Oh my soul say yes to the word of God. My soul say yes, oh yes, oh yes. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me 
whole again. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that blood that makes me white as snow. No other found I know. Oh, nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my pardon, this I see, nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my cleansing, this my plea, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow no other fault i know nothing but the blood of jesus this is all my hope and peace nothing but the blood of jesus this is all my righteousness nothing but the blood of jesus oh precious is that flow that makes me white as snow no other found i know nothing but the blood of Jesus, nothing but the blood of Jesus, nothing but the blood of Jesus, oh, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Blessings, everyone. I'm going to do a little roll call. Now, I need you to invite someone, okay? Get on here and tag and invite, invite. Don't be selfish now, okay? As soon as you get on here, tag someone in. So, I see Erica McQueen, um, Desiree Macon. Blessings to you guys. Blessings to all my wonderful people who are on here. The Apostolic Council of Miracles and ministers and chief farmer bearers. You all are just amazing. Come on, tag someone in, okay? I uh, see you, Louise. Blessings to you, beloved Louise B. Blessings to you. Trust mom is doing well, and you're doing absolutely well, and I believe it is so, and it is done. All right, tag someone in, okay? I see you, Sister B. Blessings to you. Blessings to you. Yes. Uh, my soul said yes. I tell you what, I had a wonderful time in the presence of the Lord, and I'm just here to come to share and to be a blessing and close out you know, what we've been talking about, the real overcomer. I see, yes, tag her in, tagging Kitty Lloyd, tag them in. Venetius Eccles, good evening, good to see you. I was talking about you earlier this morning. I'm like, oh my God, Venetia seemed like she's truly, truly gone far away again. But glory be to God, you're here with us this evening. Um, blessings, Chief. Yes, we are both doing well. Thank you for your prayers. Glory be to God. Victory is yours. God is awesome and he answers prayer, the effective fervent prayer of the righteous avail it much. Thank you for tuning in and checking in those that you haven't seen on here and let them know I am here. I am here. I'm going to try and tighten this up as much as I can because this is a very interesting, interesting subject that we have been on. The real overcomer, you know, and, and we talk about how David overcame his enemy and, and we went on. So I'm just going to move on for time's sake blessings blessings to all let me make sure i did not leave anyone out okay i think we've got nine on here we want to push it up we want to not leave anyone out so get them in here get them in here get them in this room right now they need to come in and be a part of this great 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 move of god the word the word in the raw the word in the raw Oh my God, I tell you, when you sit in the word of God and you stay in his presence, it is, it's just a blessing, you know, because you're, you're literally like, okay, God, I'm, I'm seeing it right here. 
I was so glued in the word today that one of my minister came by and was in, and, and I made an, an arrangement that I would be able to, to meet them at the door. And I was so zooming that they came and I didn't even realize it because I got glued in. I was glued in. Did you hear me? It is amazing when you can sit down in quiet times and spend time in the presence of God. It's the most beautiful thing. Just reason with him and talk to him. Whew, it's awesome. I see T. Ladir. You know what? I don't want to mess your name up, but I think it's T. La Dertos Richardson is watching. Welcome if this is your first time. Thank you for taking the time to stop by and join us. And I trust that you'll be able to stay with us or stay with me on what I will be talking about. If not, trust you'll be able to revisit the replay. Thank you for your support. And if you don't mind, you can invite someone on. And so I am going to move forward and at the end, I will close out in prayer. The Lord permits me to, but his blood cover us as we move forward. So for the past three weeks, I believe we talk about the real overcomer and I really want to wrap it up this evening. I see you, Minister Makins. Blessings to you, hon. Blessings. Blessings. Thank you so much for the blessings. I receive it. T. La Dertus Richardson. I receive it. I receive it, Minister Des. Glory be to God. So now we want to talk a little bit. And please invite someone, okay? Get them on here and, and see if they'll be okay, if they will like what the Lord is saying here. So we talk about the real overcomer and the real overcomer who was David. And, and how did he overcome or what made him the real overcomer? And we want to just wrap it up. I'm going to see if I can kind of just tighten it up. It might be a little lengthy, but God would let God lead me. I now just die completely to this flesh and ask God to, to just, just intervene and let it be none of me, but just all of him, that he will speak through me. This self will be totally out of the way and God himself will speak. I am truly humbled in the name of Jesus by the blood of the Lamb. Glory be to God. I see you, Gail, precious to God, Clark. Praise God. God bless you. If this is your first time, welcome, welcome. Thank you for taking time to just stop by. You didn't have to, but you choose to. And I truly appreciate it. I appreciate it. So I'm going to move on to what we're talking about. Um, for those of you who are on here for the first time, what, what we've been talking about was the real overcomer, which was David. And we talk in about David and Saul and how he overcame. So I'm going to go from chapter 18 today, uh, 1 Samuel, and we're going to look, we're going to look into some things today, okay? Um, let me start at 18, okay? We know that 18, that number means bondage. And as I was looking into the chapters and, and, and lining up the numbers, I said, wait a minute here, God is amazing. Because even the, the people whom he inspired to write his book, the numbers are lining up even with the text, with the verses, with the chapters. And I'm like, wow. So chapter 18 was where Saul resented David because he was jealous of the commendation David got from the people. So we want to look in scripture a little bit. We want to look in some scriptures a little bit on that and see, you know, what what actually happened or what caused it. And 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 we know that David is a champion because in chapter 17, he he took down his Goliath. Now, how many of us know that when we've done something great, when you see God move through you and do something great through you, You've got to really be careful when there's a great anointing that God releasing you to release to the people and a, and a shift coming, a mighty shift and his glory is revealed. That's the time you've got to be careful because that is the time when the enemy said, oh, we're going to get. That's the time when Jezebel come after you. That's the time. And we know that David accomplished something great in 1 Samuel chapter 17 where he took down Goliath. And right after that, and now you know 17 is victory. So when you end up in great victory, you have to really pay attention because after the victory, it's another battle. 
and it comes double. So look at this. So in 1 Samuel 18, 17, David had a great victory. 18, he ended up in bondage. Now, I say bondage because this is where Saul resented David, right? And I was like, man, this is this is no joke. And I want to look look at the verse where, okay, it says verse one says, Now when he had finished speaking to Saul, the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. So jealousy developed right here. It, it started to brew right here. But watch this. Saul took him that day and would not let him go home to his father's house anymore. You see, you see what happened? Jealousy kick in. Okay, then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved them as his own soul. And Jonathan took off the robe that was on him and gave it to David with his armor, even to his sword and his bow, and his belt. So David went out wherever Saul sent him and behaved wisely. And behaved wisely. It's so good that David discerned and was able to see the very moment that jealousy brewed and envy. So it's good when we can, we open our eyes and we stay focused to see who around us has become or possibly will become jealous of us or envious of us. And it moves on, okay? Verse 12, now Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him, but had departed from Saul. Therefore Saul removed him from his presence and made him his captain over and Now, watch this. Now Saul was afraid of David. Earlier he got jealous. Right? And and if you read further down, you know, just for time's sake, if you read further down in 18, you will see what happened, right? Because Saul got angry. He became very when somebody's easily angry at you, that's what happened. They're, they're having hidden jealousy for you. There's a hidden jealousy. You didn't do them anything. You might have a husband who just get up and just get angry at you for nothing. The husband can be jealous of you. The wife can be jealous of her husband because this is not what God put together. If God didn't put it together, that's exactly what's going to happen. Amen. But when God put two people together, it's harmony. It's sweet harmony. So for time's sake, I'm jumping down here. Now Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him, but had departed from Saul. So the Lord departed from Saul. And now, what happened? He's afraid of David because that anointing, that anointing intimidates hypocrites. That anointing, pure anointing, intimidates friend enemies and, and, and Judas's and undercover enemies. You speak so, the right, Chief. Sometimes when you see people acting funny with you, it's that anointing aggravating them. You see them acting like they want to resent you, they're afraid of you. Lord of mercy, I'm, I'm so loving this, y'all. And now Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him, but had departed from Saul. Therefore, Saul removed himself from his presence. So when you see people move themselves from you, don't worry, well, you, don't worry about it. They're afraid of you. They're anointed on your life. They can't stay around your light. Your light shines so bright that it wants to blind them. So they have to get away from your presence. And make him as captain over a thousand and he went out and came in before the people. So sometimes you see people giving you promotion. You still have to pay attention. Okay. And David behaved wisely. For David knew in all his ways. And the Lord was with David. Therefore, when Saul saw that he behaved very wisely, he was afraid of him. Amen. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Come on, chief. <laughs> Let me help somebody. I love this. Therefore, when Saul saw that he he behaved very wisely, he was afraid of him. So you know, 
You know a narcissistic person. You know a neighbor. You know a demonic person. You know somebody who's possessed and full of, oh my God, dead man bones. You know somebody who is not of God. You know somebody who is not with you. Watch it there. Oh my God. And when you move wisely, they are going to be afraid of you. So don't try to hold on to people when they excuse themselves from you. Don't you try it. It is because they're afraid of you and you're not be trying to tug on and you're tugging on to a narcissist and you're tugging on to a neighbor and you're tugging on to a deceiver and you're tugging on to a Judas and you're tugging on to a liar oh, and you're yeah. tugging Come on, on to a liar. You're tugging on to your own destruction. Let it go. Amen. Let it go. Let it go. My God. He, he said, David behaved wisely and he became afraid of him. Don't feel bad when somebody leave you. Rejoice. Amen. <laughs> I want to help somebody in this close out because the real overcomer behave wisely. The real overcomer is full of love. The real overcomer is slow to speak and quick to hear. The real overcomer will hide sometimes. The real overcomer will go into the mountain. The real overcomer will get and close the door Come and on. seek the face of God. The real overcomer will lock that door and shut out the word and Hallelujah. seek after God. The real overcomer. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Oh, the real overcomer. But all Israel... And Judah loved David because he went out and came in before them. David was loved. God will never leave his righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. It don't matter what storm cloud rock your ship. It don't matter what mountain rise. It don't matter the storm or the billows. It doesn't matter the fire. It doesn't matter the pestilence. Oh, feel the Holy Ghost. He's going to let you. He's going to let those who are supposed to love you, love you, protect you, keep you, and be there for you. He give angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways, lest you dash your foot against a stone. So here it comes. Here comes Saul resenting David. But in the premise of all of this, God is still showing David, I'm with you. You ride on in this bondage, but after a little while, I'm going to show you that you're the real overcomer. You just accomplished and took off a Goliath head. And now after the victory come bondage, you're not going to go up on that juniper tree like Elijah. For I am with you, David. You are my son. I don't care the mistake you make. I don't care if it's time you stumble. You're going to get up, rise, stay tall, and be the winner that I've anointed you to be, that I've called you to be, that I've made Hallelujah. you to be. Come on, somebody, talk. Coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And it comes down. And they go back. I want to go over to jump over to chapter 19. And we know that number 19 means faith. And what I love in this, I see where David exercised great faith. And then when you had nine plus one, you get ten. And in it, there's testimony in this very text, in this very content of this chapter. And I want to read just a few verses for time's sake. And we're going to look in verse 1 to 12. Of 1 Samuel 19, for those of you are taking notes, 1 Samuel 19, verse 1 to 12. So I, I'm trying to move expediently so that you, those of you who are first timers and you really want to hear what God is saying, you won't, you won't get weary. You just say, oh, this, this, this is something I can listen to. So now Saul spoke, and I'm going to read the verse 12. Now Saul spoke to Jonathan, his son, and to all his servants, that they should kill David. Watch this. They should kill David. Mm. Now Saul spoke to his son. After he made a covenant, a soul covenant, with a spiritual, with a spiritual daddy. Somebody that he loved so much. Look what he done now, look. Now Saul spoke to Jonathan, his son, and to all his servants, that they should kill David. You see the conspiracy here? All right. But Jonathan, Saul's son, delighted greatly in David. Mm. Y'all better hear me. He knew his father was no good. He knew. He knew. He knew it. Watch this. So, he delighted greatly in David. So Jonathan told David, saying, my father Saul seeks to kill you. 
Now, people would say, oh, you should never go tell uh, David ain't your blood. David is not your family. David, well, you, you should keep that secret for your daddy. That devil is a liar from the pit of hell. For the covenant that God allowed him, the soul covenant that God gave him towards his son, mm. ain't no daddy could take it away. Ain't no blood father could take it away. Amen. No, no, no. For when God put two people together, no man can it's put it asunder. Fun. And if you step out of it, God will take you out. If you step out of that covenant, God will put you where you need to go and never be heard or seen anymore. He's talking right. Uh -huh. So he tried to he try to break the covenant. And, and, and we know at the end, just let me get a little ahead of myself. At the end of the day, Jonathan died before his daddy. Because you know what? Whew, he allowed his wicked father to kind of kind of seduced him back in. And God said, oh, no, no. Oh, you breaking this covenant? I'm going to take you out. Amen. I'm going to take you out. You can't, you cannot break the covenant. You can't break God's covenant. If you break God's covenant, that's why everybody can't be in this ministry because this is the ministry covenanted unto God. And if you be in this ministry and you break the covenant, i got to always pray for those who break it. I pray deadly prayers for those who break it. Yeah, because God has his people that he has chosen and has made covenant with. Covenant. The royal remnant people. Oh, yeah. So Jonathan told David, saying, my father Saul seeks to kill you. Therefore, please be on your guard until morning and stay in a secret place and hide. Now, you see when you see that? That now that that's real. That's real covenant right here. Mm -hmm. And I will go out and stand beside my father in the field where you are, and I will speak with my father about you. Then what I observe, I will tell you. God did that in order to protect David. God did that. God allowed him to have a soul covenant for his elect, for his chosen. That's what God do. Okay. Thus Jonathan spoke well of David to Saul his father and said to him, Let not the king sin against his servant, against David, because he has not sinned against you, and because his works have been very good towards you. For he took his life in his hands and killed the Philistine, and the Lord brought about a great deliverance for all Israel. All right. All right. Well, I talked about that earlier. Mm-hmm. Took down the giant. So you saw it and rejoiced. Why then will you sin against innocent blood to kill David without a cause? Mm. Huh? Why? Why would you want to do something like that, daddy? What's up with that? So Saul heeded the voice of Jonathan and Saul swore, as the Lord lived, he shall not be killed. Hypocrite, liar. Mm. Okay. Let's see. How, let's, as time goes on, Let's see what happened. Because time tells truth. He's saying all of this right here. But watch as we progress. Time tells truth. All right. Then Jonathan called David. And Jonathan told him all these things. So Jonathan brought David to Saul. And he was in his presence as in times past. And there was war again. And there was war again, and David went out and fought with the Philistine and struck them with a mighty blow, and they fled from him. Now, this, this boy David don't play with him. He's God's anointed. Huh? God, uh-uh. He had to win. Because God, he is God's elect. He's God's special one. He's God's general. That's it. And God would never he would never see his right to forsake him. So now the distressing spirit after the hater, after the narcissistic man, after this jealous man, this evil man, this wicked man, this church man, this religious man, whoo, mm -hmm. God left him. So now he's like a reptobate. I call him a reptobate for when God leave you, you are a reptobate. Amen. You have no fear, no shame. You disgrace, you do anything. I call him a reptobate. And 
And the only place that we can think we're still employed, we're fired, and we think we're still hired is, is in Christendom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We get so delusional and we hallucinate and we think God is with us when God had left us long, long, long time ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now the distressing spirit from the Lord came upon Saul as he sat in his house with his spear in his hand. And David was playing music with his hand. Oh man. Ooh, he was he was he was so sad. This narcissistic spirit, this neighbor spirit, this evil spirit in this man make him so sad. But David was so glad. He was playing music with his hands. I guess he was like, Whoa, on my appointed time. Amen. I'm gonna wait till my change come. Oh, on my appointed time. I'm gonna wait till my change come. Oh, on my appointed time, I'm gonna wait till my change come. For the Lord give it, and the Lord take that. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm assuming how he was playing some music, man. I tell you, Lord of mercy, he was having a time with his hands and his voice. Why, the wicked man, the narcissistic man, Oh my God, the controller, the man who's full of pride, you can name every name in the book that's evil is this man, right? And that's how they behave. When they don't have their way, they tend to play a pity party syndrome. Uh, they, they want somebody to, to give them a pity party. David wasn't trying to do that. David was playing music while he was trying to create a party. David said, oh, yeah, you stay right there. For well, hand my appointed time. I'm going to wait till my church come. Oh, hand my appointed time. I'm going to wait till my church come. Oh, hand my appointed time. I'm going to wait till my church come. For the Lord give it and the Lord take that. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Here, 
for his head and covered it with clothes. So when Saul sent messengers to take David, she said, he is sick. <laughs> Lord Jesus, you know, God, is, God of a good sense and humor here, boy. She said, he is sick. Then Saul sent the messengers back to see David saying, bring him up to me in the bed that I may kill him. Now we're going to jump down because we see all the wickedness here. Okay. But she, what she did, she covered for David. She covered. If all truth should be known, there'd be no peace. So don't get it twisted and say that's a lie. If all truth should be known, there'd be no peace. So she had to do what she had to do here. Huh? <laughs> I'm verse 17. I'm loving it. Then Saul said to, my, to Michal, why have you deceived me like this and sent my enemy away? so that he has escaped. And Michael answered Saul, he said to me, let me go, why should I kill you? So David fled and escaped again and went to, Sam, to Samuel at Ramah and told him all that Saul had done to him. And he and Samuel went and stayed in Naoth. So God is always going to give you help, support, angels, whatever it is. God is going to always give you a way of escape. And that was what David experienced here. Now, this man is, was after him from, from the beginning. Okay? One, because he, was, he got commendation and he felt like he got too much over him. All right? He got afraid of him and it moves on. And then after you, when, when someone get, become afraid of you, they are your progressing enemy. When someone is intimidated by you, they are your future enemy. They're your future killer. They're your future narcissistic person. Whatever it is, you've got to watch who is afraid of you or who is jealous of you. A leopard never changes spots. Snakes on the shed to bring back new skin. Whatever they shed, they the skin is going to come right back. It's shed and it comes back. Be reminded that of that. Those of you who take things for granted. Because people, unless God himself revealed to you that they have changed, you've got to believe it, okay? For now, you remember what he said. He, he said, okay, everything's going to be okay. He's not going to be killed. That's what he said. Just to pacify, to see if he can get David. That's all a game. So once your enemy always will be your enemy. Amen. Once your enemy always will be your enemy. Once they hate you, once they join the enemy camp and come against you, they'll always come against you. Let me help somebody. They will never change. Or you don't let them into your space. Love them at a distance. They don't have to be close to you. Love them at a distance. That's it. I'm trying to help somebody. So here, Saul persecuted David in 19. And, and David, what David did, David escaped. What he did, he escaped. God always gave him help. All right, now, we're in chapter 20. And David is the real overcomer here, not Saul. No. And David, David used a lot of love. He used a lot of humility, a lot of wisdom. As you see, the wicked man noticed how wise David moved. And the very way, the, the, the way David was wise, it bothered him and make him afraid. Make him afraid of David. But he still had a, a plan to take him out. He still had a plan to destroy him. However, in chapter 20, number 20 means liberation. To be free means freedom. You will see where the loyalty of Jonathan, who is Saul's son, stayed with David. Now, because the loyalty stayed there, I want to read a few verses for you so you can understand how and why David is one of a real overcomer. So we can adopt some of these principles. We who are seeking and yearning to enter the kingdom of God can adopt some of these principles or take pages out of David's book. I hope I'm helping somebody. I see you. 
I see you, Sister Darcy. I see you, Minister. I see you, Evangelist Wanda. And I see you, Anthony McDaniel. Thank you for tuning in. I see you, Elias McKin McNeely. Thank you for tuning in. I see you. Welcome here. Welcome here. God bless you. God bless you. And, and yes, get her in here, Shakoya. What? Yes, get them on in here. Get them on in here. All right. So I want to read a few verses for you, verses 1 to 12, and I want to just move too quickly. Then David fled from Nea in Ramah and went and said to Jothan, What have I done? To Jonathan, what have I done? What is my what is my iniquity and what is my sin before your father that he seeks my life? He's talking to Jonathan and, and you know why why is this man hating me? Right. What have I done? What he's trying to fathom it. He's trying to see if he can process why is Saul hate him like this. Mm -hmm. So this this was the response. So Jonathan said to him, By no means you shall not die. Indeed, my father will do nothing, either great or small, without first telling me. And why should my father hide this thing from me? It is not so. Amen. It is not so. Let me get this slide. Then David took an oath again and said, Your father certainly knows that I have found favor in your eyes. Woo. Uh-huh. So what I love about David, he stayed focused. He stayed, he wasn't in denial of anything. Alright? And he has said, do not let Jonathan know this, lest he be grieved. But truly, as the Lord live, and as your soul live, there is but a step between me and death. So Jonathan said to David, whatever you yourself desire, I will do it for you. For God make them have a soul covenant. And this was, I'll do it for you. And David said to Jonathan, indeed, tomorrow is the new moon and I should not fail to sit with the king to eat. But let me go that I may hide in the field until the third day at evening. Verse 6. Of First Samuel 20. Right? If your father misses me at all, then say David earnestly asks permission for me that he might run over to Bethlehem, his city, for there is a yearly sacrifice there for all the family. If he says thus, it is well. Your servant will be safe, but if he is very angry, be sure that evil is determined by him. Therefore, you shall deal kindly with your servant, for you have brought your servant into a covenant of the Lord with you. Nevertheless, if there is iniquity in me, kill me yourself, for why should you bring me to your father? But Jonathan said, Far be it from you, for if I knew certainly that evil was determined by my father to come up in you, then would I not tell you? Then David said to Jonathan, who will tell me, or oh, what if your father answers you roughly? And Jonathan said to David, come, let us go out into the field. So both of them went out into the field. Then Jonathan said to David, the Lord God of Israel is a witness. When I have sounded out my father sometimes tomorrow or the third day, and indeed there is good toward David, and I do not send to you and tell you, may the Lord do so and much more to Jonathan. Now, I want to go down now to verse, verse 21, verse 16 to 21 for time's sake. So Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David saying, let the Lord require it at the hand of David enemies. Now Jonathan again caused David to vow because he loved him for he loved him as he loved his own soul. So God 
allow this because this is true friendship. Amen. Then Jonathan said to David, tomorrow is the new moon and you will be missed because your seat will be empty. Now I'm getting to a meaty area here, very meaty and juicy. And when you have stayed three days, go down quickly and come to the place where you hid on the day of the deed and remain by the stone. Now they're making a bargain. They're planning emotional intelligence here to, to make sure David is protected. Then I will shoot three arrows to the side as though I shot at a target. And there I will send a lad saying, go find the arrow. If I expressly say to the lad, look, the arrows are on this side of you. Get them and come. Then as the Lord live, there is safety for you and no arm. So they discuss prior what they're going to do and make little plans of signals and signs. And what if this happened? This is what's going to happen. If this, and they both understood the dialect there. We're going to jump over. I want to jump over to verse 25, uh, verse 25 to 34. Now, okay, now the king sat. On a seat as at other times on a seat by the wall and Jonathan arose and Abner sat by Saul's side but David's place was empty. David's place was empty because David wasn't there, okay? So, because they made a plan. Look, I'm not going to be there. You just tell your father this because D David already know the plan. All the plan coming together to do what they want to do is to kill David. So, Jonathan and David is making a plan. They were proactive, okay? Amen. So, verse 26. Nevertheless, Saul did not say anything that day for he thought something had happened to him. He is unclean. Surely, he's unclean. So, now, he didn't say anything when David was, was absent in the beginning. But watch what happened. He's like, okay, the second day, he probably said, oh, no, it's kind of odd. So, we go over to 27. And it happened the next day, the second day of the month, that David's place was still empty. Mm. Right? And Saul said to Jonathan, his son, why has the son of Jesse not come to eat either yesterday or today? So Jonathan answered Saul, David earnestly asked permission of me to go to Bethlehem. And he said, please let me go for our family as a sacrifice in the city. And my brother has commanded me to be there. And now if I found favor in your eyes, please let me get away and see my brothers. Therefore, he has not come to the king's table. Now, watch this now. He wanted him to be at the table, but yet he hated him. Mm. He wanted David to be at the table eating with him. We've got to be careful who we're eating with. We've got to be careful not every invitation is good. Amen. We've got to be careful what kind of feast we're going to. Amen. As servants of God, especially if we are very unique, if we are the odd one, if we are very anointed, if, oh, if you got if you got a, a, a beam about you, you've got to be careful who invites you to their table. I'm sorry, but I ain't going to everybody's table. I'm not going to trip with everybody. I'm not taking every invitation. I've been there, done that. I've, I've, I've gone through all of this. I have lived this. I have literally lived this. So I can relate to what happened. Now watch this. This is a deadly part. Now I'm going to go back to 27. And it happened the next day. The second day of the month. That David's place was empty. And Saul said to Jonathan. His son. Why has the son of Jesse not come to eat. Either yesterday or today. Really? And you know you hate him. <laughs> So Jonathan answered Saul, David earnest, answered Saul, David earnestly asked permission, and I'm going to jump down, because I read that already, I'm going to jump down, but I'm going to go to 29. And he said, please let me go for our family as a sacrifice. So he, he pleaded him to go, verse 30. Then Saul, then Saul, anger was arose against Jonathan. He got angry with his son. And he said to him, you son, you son of, per of a perverse, rebellious woman, 
No, he get angry with his son. He get angry with his son, right? And started telling who he's or whatever and all of that. So, do I not know that you have chosen the son of Jesse to your own shame and to the shame of your mother's nakedness? For as long as the son of Jesse lives on this on the earth, you shall not be established nor your kingdom. Now, therefore, send and bring him to me, for he shall surely die. And Jonathan answered Saul, his father, and said to him, Why should he be killed? What has he done? Then Saul cast a spear at him to kill him, by which Jonathan knew that it was determined by his father to kill David. Huh? So we've got to be careful who even inquire of us. When people don't see us and they inquire of us, it doesn't mean that they love us. No, it means that they're probably very disappointed that you weren't there and the trap they set for you is not going to work because you suddenly didn't show up. My God. So Jonathan arose from the table in fierce anger and ate no food. Jonathan got so hurt. Hallelujah. Jonathan got so hurt. He got up and said, you know what? I'm not going to eat no food. I'm just not going to be a part of this, daddy. I'm sorry. for You're just a mess. You're just a hot mess. I can't do this, daddy. You're just a wicked man. I can't believe you're my father and be so wicked. And he just didn't even bother to eat with his father. Jonathan arose from the table in fierce anger and ate no food the second day of the month. For he was grieved for David because his father had treated him shamefully. Now, what if God did not make that covenant? With Jonathan and David. Let me say this. I've lost a spiritual daughter. Because she stepped away from the covenant with God. I've lost her. I've lost many. They stepped away from the covenant. I've lost. But I thank God that Jonathan stayed. Covenant. Standing firm. For the men of God. Blood thicker than water. That's what they say. The devil is a lie. Blood is not thicker than no water. No, no, no. The real blood that is thick. Is when God put two people together. Whether they be husbands and wives. Or whether it be friends. Or whether it be sheep. Or whether they be parishioners. When God assigned you to a covenant. You've got to stay covenant. Come what may comes what may. And when you stay covenant, you're going to encounter some things. Look what he encountered with his own biological father. That's why I wrote the book about the family demon. They can be the worst. But he stood strong. He said, I can't eat with you. I can't eat with my own father who's full of evil. You Why you want to kill the man of God? He didn't do anything. This man of God is pure, he's anointed by God, but you want to kill him because of his anointed. You want to kill him because he's loved by the people. You want to kill him because he's wise. You want to kill him because he didn't dibble dabble with you and your mess. You want to kill him because you can't control him. You want to kill him because you can't do like what you want to do with him. Come on, somebody. Don't let nobody control you. Don't let nobody do what they want to do with you. That's so wrong. Stand firm and know that God is always going to give you a way of escape. He will. He's going to give you an angel's charge over you to keep you. It don't matter what happened. God will never leave you alone. I'm loving this. I'm going to jump. Verse 34. So Jonathan arose from the table. I'm, I'm going to go back there. In fierce anger and ate no food the second day of the month. For he was grieved for David because his father had treated him shamefully. And so it was in the morning that Jonathan went out into the field at a time appointed with David. And a little lad was with him. Then he said to his lad. Now you know they talk about the lad and what's with and all the moves that's going to happen, they already, they, you know, the Spirit of God was so with them, and they were able to see things, and they were able to say, hey, look, this is what's going to happen when this lad move, and this lad move a certain way, you know X, Y, Z, and you know X, Y, Z, and this is what you're going to do. So evidently, they were so in sync 
that whatever they planned, they worked it out. There was no mistakes. There was no error. They actually remember what the plan was. David remember what the plan was. Jonathan remember what the plan was. And so, and so, and so, and so. And so David stayed safe because Jonathan took the instructions carefully. And David took the instructions carefully. And they both worked in sync in the spirit. So all of the lad was to out just use emotional intelligence for the protection of the man of God. For time's sake, you can go ahead and you can sit down and read these texts and understand who is the real overcomer and how the real overcomer work. Sometimes you got to pre-plan. You got to pre-plan when you know you're in the camp of the enemy. You got to ask somebody and say, look, you know when you know this is the camp of the enemy, you know they don't like me over here. So guess what? When you see me stand, stand with me. If I sit they sit with me. If I clap my hands, okay? If you see me clap my hands five times and you, I go like this, you know there's a signal that somebody is up to no good. And if you see me go like this, you know somebody up to no good. You got to give you signals. You got to train your people. You got to train those who are covenant to you. You got to train them. I train my people. They know my signals. I train them. I teach them signals. Hey, when you see see X, you know what X, Y, Z is, okay? You, you got to teach. So they had their own signals, and they used emotional intelligence. And people who you train with signals, they can't, they can't be slow. Because you can't try to give them signal on the ground of the enemy. They've got to be quick. They've got to be adroit. They've got to be ooh, alert. And they've got to have eyes and swift like an eagle. Okay, so that's how, and and you know we talk about the faith and the, and and the, and the liberation that that David. Oh my God, it, it was amazing. If you think about it, if you think about it, and you go back and read these scriptures, you, I'm telling you, you will find yourself with so much great wisdom. Mm -hmm. Now we want to look at forty-one to forty-two, verse forty-one to forty-two. As soon as the lad had gone, David arose from a place toward the south. Remember, we talk about the number 20. It means liberation. It means freedom. Now watch this. As soon as the lad had gone, David arose from a place toward the south, fell on his face to the ground, and bowed down three times, and they kissed one another, and they wept together, but David more so, because you know David was a weeper. Then Jonathan said to David, go in peace, since we have both sworn in the name of the Lord, saying, may the Lord be between you and me, and between your descendants and my descendants forever. So he arose and departed, and Jonathan went into the city. And I told you, that number 20 means liberation. It means freedom. Did you see that? It ended with the freedom. Go. Now, we want to look on 23. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. I've got only 24, 26, and wrap it up with 31. So I'm almost there. I'm doing good. So let's look at 23. 23 means death, right? So David went back into the wilderness with this jealous man, with this enemy. That is so envious of him and jealous of him. Why? He's wise. He's anointed. My God. And the people love him. Oh, my God. The people love him. And we, as we studied through this, we, you saw where Saul couldn't help but bow to him. We, we talked about it when we, when we, when we studied and the, the week before last. You saw where Saul of this, this man, you could have killed me, but you saved my life. At the end of the day, and 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 Saul just had to give him all their honor. You know what? When they can't kill you, they just have to join you. They can't beat you, they better join you. But at the end of the day, what happened to him? He perished. Now I fast forward there. We're gonna go back to chapter twenty-three. Now let's look in First Samuel twenty-three, and we're gonna run through that. We're gonna see what happened here. He went back into the wilderness. Now the second time, second time. Lord, I tell you, Lord, he went through it, and 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 as he went through, he came out again victorious because David, David had love, David had wisdom. He had. I want you to go, and I want you to do some own work. I want you to get into the Word, and I want you to read these chapters and see for yourself. And see, I'm just going to read a few verses here. So, verse fourteen, 
1 Samuel 23. And David stayed in stronghold in the wilderness. Now we know 23 means death, right? But if you, if you had it, 3 plus 2 is 5. And even though he was looking in death, God's grace was upon him. God's favor was upon him. So in the time of wilderness where it looks like his death, favor and grace was upon him. My God. So, and David stayed in the stronghold in the wilderness and remained in the mountains in the wilderness. Of this, Saul sought him every day, but God did not deliver him into his hand. Amen. The enemy sought him every day. Every day. Some of you have been on your job and you hate to go to work. You love what you do. But every day you go to work, there's an enemy sorting you, seeking to get you fired, seeking to get you written up. Just, just, just be a, whoo. And then when you look, you keep loving. You stay wise. You know how to, how to maneuver yourself on the job. Before you know it, they're fired. Huh? Amen. They're fired and, and you get their position. Oh, God. Let me encourage somebody today, y'all. God did not deliver him into his hand. God will not deliver his righteous into the hand of the enemy. He will not do it. No. And he, God will let you be right where the enemy is and the enemy blind. They can't even see you. That's the God that we serve. Okay. So David saw that Saul had come out to seek his life, and David was in the wilderness of Ziph in a forest. David saw him, but he didn't see David. <laughs> Whew. Then Jonathan, Saul's son, arose and went to David in the woods and strengthened his hand in God. He went and strengthened his hand in God. I assume he encouraged him. He reminded him that you will not die. He reminded my father cannot kill you. My father will not kill you. I, I, I'm, I'm just imagining how he empowered his covenanted friend, his, his father. And he, he said, look, I'm with you. That's my daddy, but I promise you he can touch you. That's my father, but I promise you. You mean more to me than my very blood father. You shall live, David. Ain't nothing going to happen to you. He strengthened his hand. How many of you have been going through sometimes and you just get one phone call or a message from God or a prayer through, through the phone or you get a song or you get a word or you just, he, he just reminds you through his angel that look, I don't care what you're going through. I'm going to strengthen you today. Let me encourage you. So, and and God give you covenant, covenanted friends and, and loved ones, people that you don't even know that you've been covenanted to. I can't look over here no more. I can't look over here no more for God has given me a covenant. He had made me now have a covenant that when I feel like I'm going under, this covenant is going to come and strengthen my hand. And so he strengthened his hand. I, I, I'm so loving this. Y'all understand. Then Jonathan saw son arose and went to David in the woods and strengthened his hand. How many times you feel like you're in exile? How many times you just feel alone and somebody... Somebody just got to do something for you. How many times you feel like you don't know if you're going or coming? How many times you feel like all hope is gone? How many times you feel yeah. like the enemy come one way, then he come another way, then he come. And every time you turn around and look like you're losing. And then God just sent a strengthened hand. How many times? I know that you've had that experience. Somebody, if you're living for God, I'm sure you have experienced that. So it goes down, and he said to him, Do not fear, for the end of Saul, my father, shall not find you. Do not fear. He strengthened him. You shall be king over Israel, and I shall be next to you, 
Even my father Saul knows that. That's why he was acting up. For he's jealous over the relationship with Jonathan and David. And he's jealous over David. And he said he want to be David and couldn't be David. My God. He hate this man. And this man didn't do me anything. We're going to jump over. And you can read further down. I'm going to jump over to, to the next chapter. So it can get you quickly out of here. And just to read maybe one or two more verses here. Verse 27. But a messenger came to Saul saying, hurry and come for the Philistines have invaded the land. Now, now when he planning, when he was planning to take out David, what God did, God brought the distraction. God distracted him and he get a message that look, you got to go. We, we, no. So now the plan to kill David is over with. The plan to take out David is over with because God sent distraction. God sent a distraction. Yes, God will do that. He sent distraction. But a messenger came to Saul saying, hurry. While Saul was trying to take down God's son. He said, oh, I'm going to mess this up. I, I'm 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 gonna throw some destruction, some distraction. I'm gonna distract. I'm gonna make some trouble come up over here, so he can forget about my son, and then my son can get some way out. Man, I tell you, God is awesome. I remember. I'm gonna share something with you personally with me. Years ago, I was in a very very bad uh, relationship, but even then, I'm in a bad relationship. I still feel is like okay, this is it. It's still what God says. I'm going to finish strong. I'm going to do what I have to do. And being in this marriage, I went through what David David is, is going through right here. And so it was said that there was a revival. And of course, I'm one of the, the, the wife that I'm going to support you. I don't care what you do. I'm going to be that submissive wife. I'm going to be that supportive wife. For better or for worse, God will do the next. I went out and I sit in that revival and I was cussed out in the church. I was with my friend Deborah. Yeah, I think she was with me and I was cussed out in the church and the chasm. And I sit there so humble and sweet. And it carried on. And then and a few of the, the, the confederates and older women, they my false prophet, and they go and they oh and they throw the chasms on me. I fought, and right away and they it like I oh it, it was a setup to destroy me. And I sat there in loveliness, looking as beautiful as a queen as I am always. And immediately God allowed something to come in that church, and suddenly a big black bug came in there. Woo, woo, woo. I was going around that man like woo, 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 woo. I sit there and I say yes God and that bug would not come near me but the bug went through the church like this woo, 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 woo. I say yes God and I put a pleasant smile on my face <laughs> I had the most beautiful smile I look at my friend we look at each other then the Lord says now get up and walk out a few minutes later, we walked out and we looked at each other. I looked at her. I said, wow. I couldn't say anything because I'm still being a good wife. I'm not going to say nothing derogatory about this neighbor that I was married to. And I looked. My friend groaned. She went like this. Mm. I said, yes, go to Sable and it's going to be okay. And God has delivered me in a mighty way. And one of the women who hollered out in the church, them a false prophet. A few days later, she ended up with some leg issue and couldn't walk. God have a way. When, when, when you be like David, the real overcomer, <laughs> God will send it. You be in the battle and they want to destroy you and they want to kill you because you're anointed, because you stand out, because you're beautiful, because people love you, because you make an impression. When you step in the room, you create an impression. You, you create a command in the name of Jesus because you don't have to do anything to make a command. You don't have to say anything to be heard. You just walk and you're heard. They're looking you and you're heard. Come on somebody. 
Then they go, they try to kill. But then God will lift up a standard when the enemy coming like a flood. He said, I will lift up a standard. And he lifted up that standard for me. I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to stand up and, and disgrace myself. I didn't have to step out of my integrity. I say, God, on my appointed time, my change will come. And I will suffer long because it's my own disobedience why I am in this situation. So I'm going to be all that you'd have me to be. That it would be beautiful, pure, and be the real overcomer. At the end of the day, Lord, you will give me beautiful ashes. A garment of praise for the garment of heaviness. And this is what happened right here. God sent destruction when he wanted to. If you go up to verse 25, when Saul and his men went to seek him, they told David, therefore he went down to the rock and stayed and stayed in the wilderness of man. And when Saul heard that he pursued David in the wilderness of man, while he pursued him, God said, okay, what? You still going after my son? What should I'm going to do? And then he said, in the premise of all of that, but a messenger came to Saul saying, hurry, hurry, hurry. Now, hurry, hurry. Oh, he, he, they didn't say forget about David. He said, come, 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 quick, quick. He, he literally instantly forget that he wanted to kill David. While I was sitting there and God sent that strange bug, big black bug that was just about to take down that neighbor of my life. What? He forget. He forget about all the wickedness that was being performed in the church. He forget. And he had to jump off and they got scared for his life because this boy was about to take him out. God said, you touching my mother, daughter. You messing with my daughter. You messing with this vessel. You messing with my apostle. I'm going to take you out. That's what he did right here. So you want to take David out? I'm going to take you out. Now I'm going to send some distraction. So he said, hurry. And a messenger came to Saul and said, hurry and come. For the Philistine, I've invaded the land. Therefore Saul returned from pursuing David. <laughs> he returned. He had to cease from pursuing David. That neighbor had, had a, he had a cease. He had a cease from what he was doing. The wickedness that he was performing. He and his host. You hear what I say? <laughs> God allowed that. So then he had this just oh, I, I gotta go take care of the situation. Uh, they, uh, returned from pursuing David and went against the Philistine. So they called that place the Rock of Escape. God will let that place where the enemy want to take you out be named. Or you will be named a brand new name. I hope I'm helping somebody. Amen. Come on, share this video. Share. You can't keep this to yourself. You can't. We want to look in, we want to look in, in chapter 24. And we want to see, okay, in chapter 24, Oh, David, spear is enemy. You can read that. He speared him. Now, now it God turned it where, where David have it now. David have the enemy. David, I, I'm loving it. David have him. David have him to take him out. And he, he said, let me read it for you. So David restrained his servants. And go up to verse 6. And he said to his men, the Lord forbid that I should do this thing to my master. Verse 5. Now it happened after that David heart troubled him because he had cut Saul robe. He said, show him like, look, I can take you out if I wanted to. And even when he cut the robe, his heart troubled him. But he's showing him, look, oh God put you in my hand. You wicked. Now you're in my hand. I can do what I want to do with you. But no, I, I know better. For God got this. God's going to handle you for me. I'm not going to take this in my hand. If you read, if you read from verse 4 down to about 10. Let's see if I can jump into it real quick. Then the man of David said to him, This is the day of which the Lord said, 
to you. Be on our deliver your enemy into your hand that you may do to him as it seems good to you. And David arose and secretly cut off a corner of Saul's robe. Now, you know what? I can stop right there and show, hey, look, <laughs> look, I got this. What'd you say? <laughs> What'd you say? You think you're bad? You ain't bad like that. Huh? What you hate me for? What did I do you? And he go down and he said, you know what? My Lord, the king, and when Saul looked behind him, David stooped with his face to the earth and bowed down. And David said to Saul, why do you listen to the words of men who say, indeed, David seeks your harm? David had him. But David is a great overcomer. David said, I will not take up God's job. I'm going to let God do his job where you are concerned. But I'm showing you how God put you right up in my hands and I did not kill you. But yet you wanted to kill me and I didn't do you anything. God will let you have the desires on your enemies. When we go to and you know 24 is a priest. It means a priesthood. You see he operate like the priest right there. That's it. Because he have the perfect love in him. Love that cast on fear and torment. He have a forgiving heart. David exemplified the fruit of the spirit right there. He is a real overcomer because the fruit of the spirit became active. It lives in him. That's the priesthood. You can't be a priest if you don't have. You can't be a priest, but you can be a priest of what? But when you're the priest of the living God, you're going to overcome with love, with long suffering, with goodness, with joy, with self-control. And the list goes on. Now, we want to look on chapter 26, where, where David spirit him again. And you can read that for yourself, 26, verse 1 to 12. And we're going to go right into what we wrapped it up with last week. Where oh, we can look into chapter 31. Now 26 is the gospel of Christ. If you look and you, I want you to do some homework and become the overcomer like David. Where David, you, you don't have to destroy your enemy. You pray for them and you show them. I can, I can take you up, but I won't. I'm going to do exactly what God tell me to do. So David spared Saul a second time. A second time, not one time, but two times he spared him. And as he spared him, you know, that's the gospel of Christ. And the gospel of Christ, what does it symbolize? Uh -huh. You know, the gospel of Christ is deep. It's love. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Everlasting. So when, when we have enough love in us, when we walk with the the peace of God in our hearts, we will be able to let the gospel of Christ itself prove that we are, we are living what God himself has given to us. His gospel, his salvation, my God. He died that you and I can have an opportunity to live again. He gave his only begotten son. Amen. Huh? Who has been crucified, who's been buried and risen and ascended. My God, my God, what more can we ask for? The price is paid. I'm coming down, chapter 31, and we're going to look and see the end of the end of someone who is so evil and so wretched and so jealous. We talked about this last week, the end of what become the end of this wicked man. Let me say this. You don't need to, you don't need to hate your enemies. You don't need to fight them. And you don't need, if you live for God, Remember, he's going to give you angels charge over you to keep you. Remember, he's not going to leave you alone. Remember, he's going to give you a way of escape. You are the real overcomer when you can let go and let God. You're the real overcomer when you practice love. You're the real overcomer when you stay wise. You're the real overcomer when you use wisdom to do what you do. You're the real overcomer when you stay focused. Amen. And you're the real overcomer when you have the perfect love of God. How do I get the perfect love of God, Chief Apostle? You get the perfect love of God when you die completely to yourself and give your heart completely to God. That's, that's how you become. So in verse in chapter 31, 
and we're just going to wrap this up and 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 we did this last week one to seven now the philistines fought against israel and the men of israel fled from before the philistine and fell slain on mount Gibeo. then the philistine followed hard after saul and his son and the philistines killed jonathan abner and makusha and saul's son the battle became fierce against saul the archers hit him and he was severely wounded by the archers. Then Saul said to his armor bearer, draw your sword and thrust me through with it. Lest these uncircumcised men come and thrust me through and abuse me. But his armor bearer would not, for he was greatly afraid. Therefore Saul took a sword and fell on it. And when his armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he also fell on his sword and died with him. Now, at the end of the day, Saul fell on his own sword. So the pit that the enemy digging for you, that's their pit. The trap that the enemy set for you, that's their trap. If you stay in the will of God, if you stay prayed up, if you stay connected to God, if you worship God in spirit and in truth, the very trap, the pit, the lie, the setup, you name it, every plot, everything that it set up against you, it is for them. They will fall on their own sword. And then you will live as the real overcomer. I need somebody to praise God. Give me some praise hands up in here. Hallelujah. Give me some praise hands. You don't worry about it for that trap that they set. That's their trap. The pit that they dug. They dug it for themselves. Let me see who's talking to me. For no weapon that form against God's people shall prosper. No weapon. No weapon a lie. No weapon a set up. No weapon of bureaucracy. No weapon on the job. The job that they say, they, they brew it to, to get you fired. Oh, they're going to be fired. Come on, somebody. Talk Amen. to me. Talk to me. Oh, my God. Every trap the enemy set up against you who live in right. Against you who have the heart of God. Against you who are dying daily to live right. Oh, it will not prosper. It, it's going to backfire. Everything is going to backfire on your enemy. Let me see who's talking to me right here. Chief, you have, you have sure given us enough these past four weeks to study. Thank you. Yes, please study. Please go in and read because, you know, the time, it would have so much time. You know, I don't want to have you too long and alive. So when you take these lessons and go over them, you have enough. Yes, Louis, enough to feed on. Enough to say, you know what, if I go and read this, I'm going to even have more. I'm going to receive more because I'm literally reading it for myself. So God bless you. We are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes, Sister Darcel. Let me see who else is talking to me here. Chief. Okay, I've gotten that. Um, You don't have to say anything, but you're heard. Yes, Chief, you're speaking right. Glory Amen. be to God. Glory be to God. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's what I want God to do is to speak to me, to speak right, to let the people know and understand that God is with them and God is for them, for those who are seeking after him and that no weapon form against you will ever prosper. My God, may God bless her, Lord. Yes, I received that. I received that. Uh, let me see who else is here. Uh, okay. All right, let's see who's speaking here. God made it fail. Everything the devil tried. God, oh yeah. That that God just said, okay. And, and he will allow them to let them feel like they're winning. And then suddenly he just said, oh, sidetrack. Oh, he just drowned them. He just just closed them, let them be drawn like he drowned those enemies that were coming after the children of Israel. All right, let's see who else is here. My God, how many times? All right, teach chief. This Louise. I see you, Louise. B. I see you. You you on here. You talking to me. Yes, yes. You got to share this to your friends, your family, your loved ones, your co-worker who is a good co-worker. 
You got to share it, even share it to the devil too. If you know somebody with the devil and is acting like the devil and they don't know, maybe this will help them to get delivered. So share. Teresa Williams is watching. God bless you, Teresa. Share Amen. this to about 10 people now, Teresa. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. I see. Um, see, I don't want to leave anyone out. I hope Lynn Michelle Guilford is watching. Thank you so much. If this is your first time, welcome on here. Overseer Bank is watching. God bless you, Overseer Bank. Share this to 10 people. Lynn Michelle, share this to 10 people. Come on, share it because you know what? This may help someone. Carolyn, I didn't know I'm Thomas. How are you, sweetie? I haven't seen you in a long time. Amen and amen. God bless you. Share this to at least 10 people if you can. Tag someone. Tag them in. Daniel, Daniel, Jimmy. Amen. God bless you. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Please, I apologize if I didn't. Uh, I see you again, Carolyn. Annie, I see you again. Uh, Brother Lacey, I see you. God bless you. God bless you. Gail, I think I see you. Gail Clark. Gail, precious to God, Clark. Praise God. Thank you. Blessings, Chief Apostle. All right, all right. I think I've, I've, I've all of it you and let you know I've seen you before. So some of you, I may repeat your name because you're talking back to me a couple times. So now I want you to share this to at least 10 people, okay? Tag them in. Share and share and share and share and share. God bless you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. God bless you. God bless you. And this is the end of our The Real Overcomer. And just, just type it in. I'm a real overcomer. Speak over your life and say it. I'm a real overcomer. I'm a real overcomer. Speaking and know that no weapon form against you shall prosper. No weapon form against you on your job. No weapon form against your health. No spiritual, no spiritual, uh, uh, no black heavens will work against your health. You gotta, you gotta speak it. None, none, no weapon, no weapon form against my health, my life, my finances, my peace. In the name of Jesus, my children, you gotta name it. No weapon, no weapon. God will allow that weapon to return. Hallelujah. To return to the enemy, okay? You got to write it, make it plain, and let it be known. Put it in stamp. Put it in black and white. That none, not, no weapon will work against you, your life, your children, your finances, your health, your relationship, your marriage, and the list goes on. Your children, and the list goes on and on and on. God bless you. God bless you. I'm a real overcomer. Yes, and no weapon form against me shall prosper. It is written, and it is so, Aaliyah Christopher. You wrote it. You put it in black and white. You stamp it. You seal it, and it shall be in the name of Jesus. It shall be. Speak those things that are not. Make right. Make the vision plain and run with it. Write it down. For what you write down, it sticks. It stays. And no weapon come against what you've written down shall prosper. Write it on this word and believe and watch your life. We're living in perilous times. Yes, we know that Jesus is on the way. Jesus is on the way. So we've got to speak these things and we've got to believe it and we've got to live. And when Jesus, when, when God burst the heavens to come back for his saying, we'll be ready to be caught up to meet him. And he'll say, well done, my good and faithful servant. In whom I'm well pleased. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Let me pray a quick prayer. Lord, I thank you for this word on tonight. I thank you, Lord, that you will forever give us victory to reign over the plans of the enemy. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for those who listen on this evening. I thank you, Lord, that they will never be the same. That they will trust you. That they, Lord, will live for you. And know that because they're living for you, no weapon form against them shall ever prosper. We thank you, Lord, that we serve a God. A God who is real. A God who delivered Daniel. A God who delivered the three boys. A God who healed the sick man. A God who healed the blind. A God who have made the cause miracles upon miracles to happen that God then you are still the God now and you will do the same now and forever and Lord I just thank you I thank you Lord that you're with us and you will never Lord let your righteous be forsaken nor in the seed begging bread we thank you for the God that you are we thank you Lord Jesus we thank you we can't thank you enough I thank you for this word and I thank you Lord Jesus that we will forever we will forever be that overcomer Knowing that, Lord, we trust you, and if we trust you, we will never be ashamed. 
Thank you, Lord, for healing and strength. Thank you for divine favor. Thank you for sweet rest on tonight. Thank you, Lord, we thank you. Let your blood reign over this world. Let your blood reign over this nation. Let your blood reign God, in the cities and the town. Let your blood reign and let peace be into this nation. Hallelujah. Peace be into this hurt. Peace be into this world. Peace in the families. Peace in the school. Peace in the workplaces. Peace in the name of Jesus. Peace in the mind of your people and those who are sick, Lord. I'm asking you, Lord, to bring forth a miracle and heal your people, Lord. Yes, let Lord. them be Hallelujah. healed in the name of Jesus after your soul prosper. Lord, that they prosper in health. Let somebody be healed now in the name of Jesus. I stand in your word, Lord, and by your stripes, somebody be healed in the name of Jesus. Somebody be healed in the name of Jesus by the blood of the Lamb. Let your healing waters flow, God. And our friends and loved ones, those, Lord, who are sick, those who are battling issues, those who are battling viruses, God, and different conditions in their body, I'm asking you, Lord Jesus, that you will, Lord, you will bring healing to every prior request that has been sent to me, Lord, that you will answer these prior requests and heal your people, Lord. Heal those who have asked for healing and deliver those who ask for deliverance and provide for those who are in lack in the name of Jesus by the blood of the Lamb. Let the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus prevail. The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus prevail. Let the blood, let the blood, let the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, let the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus prevail. The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus prevail. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I give you glory and praise and honor. Now, which I fail to ask you, Lord, do not fail to grant it. It is in Jesus' name that I pray and believe and call it done. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you back next week at 7.30 right back here.